Welcome to this week's video. We have some catch and cook, free diving, and the step van build electrical system. You're in for a ride. Some of the seals that I dive with happen to have a boat, and this fine sunny summer's day they invited me out. I feel very, very lucky to have friends who have watercraft, and side note, I'm actually studying for my powerboat license. Woo! Anyway, join us as we go in search of some red rock and Dungeness crab. Down. Yeah, it's gonna be lost some stuff one day. it's gonna be steep today. Yeah. Going on about, going on about, going on oh, about. Look at that, yuck. Oil. Hey, hey. Yes. Look at you can see how it rounds a little bit too, there. Yeah. Puppy dog got a life jacket. Hi, puppy. So, Cosy, this is what keeps it open? Or oh, okay. So, just so you know. Mm -hmm. It's all attacked, so I'm not going to lose it. Let's see if that works. <laughs> yeah. See if there's any crab in there.
and just hopped out. When looking for crab to harvest, make sure you know the opens and closures in your area. Make sure you know the specific catch sizes for each crab because not all crabs have the same size limits and for every license there is a daily catch limit. So make sure you know and are read up on the rules and so that we can continue to have a sustainable harvest in fishery. Uh, over harvesting is a massive problem so make sure you respect the rules so that there's some left for the next generation or for us next year um, but at the moment I am editing my very first documentary it's getting there I know I'll get it done I've like somehow not freaked out and just knowing that I'm capable of doing it I'm just tired <laughs> Time to go for a bike ride. So I brought, I, I did it in separate files or all in one big long file. Okay. So the first piece is nine minutes. The second piece is about eight minutes okay. and the third piece is about 15 minutes it should all be the same volume i think so yeah some Admire all of us that do it, so I can never do that. I'm going to show you these beautiful flowers. Aren't they gorgeous? These are the flowers I got given after the movie screening. And I'm drying them all, and they're drying beautifully. And these red ones smell absolutely divine. They're these flowers up here are the flowers I got gifted at the end of my documentary from the seals to say a big thank you. And I thought I would dry them because there's some beautiful roses in here and as you probably already know I've been collecting rose petals to make rose things. There's a mosquito. Ah, mosquito! And more roses. More pretty things. Right, I have to try and kill this mosquito. I'm really excited to share with you a few of these behind the scenes from my documentary. 
The documentary took so much effort and it was such an exciting thing to have my own premiere and to sell out an entire little theatre. Uh, I'm very excited that I'll soon, soon, soon have an online premiere and a little mini trailer for you all to watch and then come and get tickets to come and join and watch it with me. That's so exciting. I will post that and announce it on my YouTube channel uh, soon with plenty of notice so that you might get time to see it. Hopefully the algorithm shows it to you. I've never done this before so working with a local theatre to try and get a hang of what size files they need, how do they need it, what format, how does it play, what sound levels was such a cool experience and I'm really glad that I got to have a go. It's my first ever film. <laughs> Hi everybody. How are you all doing? Oh my gosh. Today is the first day I've had in such a long time where I literally have no real work to do. No editing, no like pressing jobs. Oh my gosh, I am so freaking relieved. It is amazing. Um, I think I'm blown away. The documentary is done. Oh, it's such a relief. So now I get to do this thing which is called following your fancy or following your passion, following your whatever it feels good to do in the moment. And I'm pretty freaking pumped. So I guess you get to come with me and see what we get up to. I think these are some of the things I've been thinking about doing. I've been thinking about dyeing my hair, but also I've got some sheets I want to dye. I've got some plants that I absolutely need to plant in the next day or two. And I want to take the electrical system out of the old van and put it in this van because I want my power system. I want my power system so bad. So that's a do list. Well, let's get going. This is Mystery's power system. So I have 2000 watt inverter, a plug in input, and a solar input, all of which I'm taking out. That plugs into the back of the inverter. And from the battery, we have a negative line and a positive line. So yeah, next job is to unscrew these and take this whole box out, unscrew that, take that out, undo this, undo this, take that out. It's gonna be a job. But then I'll have a power system in my new van, or at least the start of one. Cause these are lead acid golf cart batteries and they're six volts each. And I, they're deep cycle, but I would really like lead acid battery, not lead acid. I would really like lithium batteries. So I've been saving up all my pennies from every sticker you buy so that I can replace these measly golf cart batteries with some really juicy, really, really juicy lithiums. So. <clears throat> okay, we got it. Now I can pull this forward. Ha ha ha. <sighs> One last video to help me remember how everything was connected so I can do it again. <gasps> Oh, yeah. 
Ow! <sighs> oh my god, these are so heavy. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna get these batteries out of here. Oh, it's slightly easier to move. My, my make do handle three more times. I'm gonna sweat all over this. Okay, try again. Yay! Yay! Dead cockroach. Excellent. Next up, let's remove this guy. Unplug, disconnect, remove. dead. I am absolutely dead. But the next problem is the back of Siren is not ready to have this put in yet. I have to install a fuse block, route some wires, clean, sweep, reorganize, move the heater, Important. This is the connection for my mobile solar panels. So if I want to be able to charge off solar before I put solar on the roof of this beast, this port is very important because then I don't have to open the back doors. So over here, Siren already has a plug. So the next job, I need to. Drill a hole for that, which I'm not looking forward to. Not the fun bit, but we have it. Very, very important. Yay, electrical. All the bits, all the bits ready for installation. Next job is to sort this out because at the moment, we ain't nowhere to put it. Right? Ain't nowhere. This has to come out. This has to be cleaned up. This has to come out. Under there has to be cleaned out. I'm actually thinking that's where the batteries will go. I just have to make a way of being able to push them in and pull them out when I need to. Normally you want access to batteries to top them up with water and stuff. So if I put them all the way underneath there, it's not much access. So either I cut a hatch through this or I put some way so I can pull out that battery box. But then I think it will go into there. And then I've got to put a fuse box over here where all these wires are. And then we're good. Hooray! Distilled water batteries. And now we put that in there. Hey, 
that's done. I am perspiring, so I've got to figure out what I need to do. There's no point in doing any more of that because I have to do more work here to get the space even ready to put batteries in. Before I go for a swim, this is the next job I'm gonna tackle. Just emptying, tidying, clearing. <sighs> I'm dying. I've waited so long for summer to come properly so I could do this job because I have so much stuff that I needed to leave outside. And now that summer's here, I'm like, it's too hot. I'm so hard to please, but also we're getting stuff done, yay. This is my dilemma. Currently, this is my garage space. Goes way further back there. This is in the middle. Space underneath there. Spare bed. I'm thinking I might get rid of this. I don't know. I have just recently got a folding kayak and I will need the space to go here. I need somewhere to put this heater. This is a usable space, but it's not very accessible. Unfortunately, I already drilled a hole in the floor for this, so if I do decide to re relocate it, I'll have to redo the floor hole. But I'm just like, I need to make sure this is the most effective use of space, because with this here, all the long things like my paddleboard, the kayak, won't fit in there, because this bloody thing's in the way. And then, if I move this, where else do I put it? I don't know how to do my layout, especially this corner here. And it feels like if I was to get these drawers, I would then have somewhere to put this heater more effectively. Oh, I just don't know. I can patch this hole in the floor. It's, that's not an issue. I, I just think these chest of drawers probably have to go because I need the depth of space because otherwise I only have like this much floor space in my garage and I would really like double that because then I can build shelves and whatever I need custom for the things I want to put in here but this thing is taking up too much space <sighs> and I'm sure if I was to take it all apart I could wall mount most of it Instead of having it in this big chunky metal box, if I wall mount it, then it's up, out of the way, further away from my electrical panel, which is going to be here. It just makes a lot more sense, because I still have to figure out where I'm putting my inverter. And the inverter... The inverter really isn't going to fit under there, I don't think. I don't think that's probably a great place for a water tank or batteries. figure some sort of rope situation that I did when the first time to in order to be able to pick them up and move them without breaking or hurting my body. I know you can get battery straps for handles, but I don't have one of those. Uh. Uh, my body hurts already and I only moved one. or stretching or something. Nope. 
These two together, T's two together, so you get t six and six to become twelve, and then two twelves <sighs> in series and parallel, in parallel and series. Anyway, I forget which way it round it is, but you get six and six together, it becomes twelve. Twelve and twelve becomes in it, it, together, just to increase the amp powers, not increase the voltage. We'll connect up a few more things. Negative to negative, positive to po oopsie, this is upside down. Positive to positive. I'm gonna go negative to positive, and then negative to positive. So we still have the negative and positive wire to connect for the inverter these two wires which I haven't connected yet and we also have to connect a ground wire which I haven't connected yet so I'm just gonna leave these as is because I need to go stretch my body hurts so I'm gonna leave these the batteries are connected as a unit which is awesome and you know what? I'm gonna connect my solar panel right now and charge it. Today of all days, the ideal to charge the batteries, because I know they're not fully charged right now. Come on. So. Solar panel, partial shade. Now this solar panel has a solar charge controller built in right here. So it will tell me the battery percentage. And then this has a fuse in it for safety. And this can get connected directly to the battery. My wiring diagram, this because it is fused is my main positive and this on the opposite side is my main negative. So those are the two points that we will connect this. So I'll pull this apart a little more. We have main negative and main positive. Ooh, nothing went bang. Let's go check the solar panel. It should turn on. Mm, not. Cool. <sighs> I'm getting tired and hungry and grumpy, so I just went to the garden and picked kale and fennel and Swiss chard, Swiss chard, <coughs> Swiss chard, and some basil mint. Let's go make some food. I'm thinking I'm gonna get a tasty salad going. <sighs> that that sunshine oh. the basil mint makes everything smell so good so I'm just going to cut it all up now I just want to show you some realities I've got so many projects on the go that my van is a little bit of a mess there is stuff everywhere and I'm feeling a little overwhelmed I'm trying to get this battery system done so that I can just relax. But I stopped by a farm stand on my way home. Got a lettuce and some eggs straight from some local farm stand chickens. So I think I'm gonna make a little like salad and egg 
thing. I'm gonna show you as I go. I hope you can see that. You might even better hear the mosquitoes and the parrots in the background. But yay, it's working. <sighs> I did it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Interestingly enough, I switched this bit because this is, it, it has a solar connection here for the same as my panels, but panel didn't like it when I switched it for the original piece that I had plugged into this van where you plugged it into the side of the vehicle worked fine solar is one of those things electrical is one of those things it's so frustrating and then you get it working and then it's so satisfying I did it yay tomorrow I hook up the inverter and then the 12, 120 volt, and then the one, 12 volt fuse block slash bus bar. And then the 120, and then a couple more lights that I have to install. <sighs> this is the beginning of my solar setup. It's just the beginning. <sighs> we made it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hoped you enjoyed this episode and maybe you learned a thing or two from my explaining how I've done my electrical setup. If you do have questions, post them below. I'm sure either me or somebody equally as knowledgeable or more knowledgeable will post an answer. Uh, electrical is fun. I love the problem solving. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big th thumbs up. Boop, 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 boop. It really helps the algorithm share it with people. When looking for crab to harvest, make sure you know the opens and closures in your area. Make sure you know the specific catch sizes for each crab because not all crabs have the same size limits and for every license there is a daily catch limit. So make sure you know and are read up on the rules and so that we can continue to have a sustainable harvest in fishery. Uh, over harvesting is a massive problem so make sure you respect the rules so that there's some left for the next generation or for us next year. Well, I hope that you can share it, share it with your friends, uh, tell people you know to come and watch my channel, make a huge difference, it means a lot. Subscribe, hit the notification bell and I'll see you next week for part two because we've got to do the installation of the inverter and I'm gonna do an electrical shakedown to make sure everything works and we're gonna go take the electrical system on a road trip. Boop.